We'll next talk about some of the features of hearing, things like how do you code for you know, pitch and loudness. But first, to finish this up from, from the last um, segment that we did, I have to mention to you that whenever the stereocilia bend towards the kinocilium, that's when it increases. So, so, so towards the kinocilium, you always increase the, the action potential frequency. And then when you go away from it, so away from the kinocilium, that's when you have less action potentials. So that, that, that's a key to, to understand how you, or why things go up and down. It's a matter of, of direction of the bending of the stereocilia. Okay, let's move on a little bit to how we code then for loudness and for pitch. So again, if I could draw, just draw for you again the membrane. You know, here's a, here's a basket membrane here. And this, this, is what, this is what vibrates. So, so imagine that you have a bunch of inner hair cells on there, inner hair cells on the basket membrane. And these cells, of course, have the graded cilia. Right. They're attached to the tip links, of course. And they are anchored into your overlying tectoral membrane. So when you have loud sounds, loud sound, loudness, create bigger vibrations of the membrane. And so more cells are activated. So, so, so when you have a, a loud sound, you have more inner hair cells are involved because of, of the bigger vibration. And for softer sounds, less. So more means louder and less. IHC activation means it's a, it's, it's a softer sound. That's how you code for that. Also, now, we can also code for pitch the same way. For, so for pitch, imagine that, that this is your cochlea. Here's so the cochlea, of course. Like cochlea like that. You know, remember you have your three chambers like so. Okay. So in, here's the round window. Now here's the oval window. I'll tell you the oval window. Now here's the round window. So imagine you're going towards here. So in, in, in the cochlea, each cell is responsive to a different frequency. So at this end, towards the base of it, you have your high frequency sound. So maybe 20,000 20, hertz will be here. All the way down at the other end, you start to get lower frequency. So maybe here, this could be, perhaps be maybe 1,000 hertz. And that's how the brain knows, depending on which cells are firing, that tells the brain what the frequency is and therefore what the pitch is. So you, perceive a so you perceive a different pitch based on which of the inner hair cells are being activated because they are linked to a certain frequency. It's called tone notopic mapping. And this kind of mapping goes all the way up to the pathways, into the brain, up to your primary auditory cortex. It has to go. So it's mapped all, all along the way. Okay, so that's pitch and loudness. Now we can also look at, I think something that's on the point here was what's called cochlear tuning. So now we're gonna look at what roles the outer hair cells play. So far, we've only been talking about the inner hair cells. So remember the outer hair cells run right next to the inner hair cells. And so, you see here we have a situation where here is, again, your vascular membrane is here, vascular membrane. Here is overlying tectoral membrane, and here you have your outer hair cells. I mean, they, they, they come in like three somewhere there, outer hair cells. And with your equally length, equal length stereocilia. So these stereocilia can get shorter or longer. So sometimes they will get longer.
And when they get longer, now there's slack, slack in the strings or sericilia. And that slack will create more vibrations. So the, the area, that part of the membrane will vibrate more easily because this is not, it's not being held with high tension from these strings. In other cases, the strings get shorter. And when it gets shorter, they pull the thing there, tighten it up. So it's making more, it's making more, more dramatic than that. So no, no, I hear it. Tighter, like so. Because it got shorter. And now the membrane will, vib will not vibrate as much because it's being held in check by those strings, by, by, by the stereocilia. So here you have less vibration. So the, the brain uses this kind of lengthening and shortening of the stereocilia to make some parts of the membrane more easily vibratable, if that's a word, and the other parts less so. So that way you, you can you have a chance to isolate the signal better. This is called cochlear tuning where you try to make sure the cochlea is responsive where it should in some areas and less responsive where it should not be, based on how tight these strings are on the outer hair cells. Okay, let's do the auditory pathway. Okay, the path of sound, neurally speaking. So here, Again, we begin in the cochlea. So the first neurons travel out, the first order of neurons, and these neurons will snap into a, a nucleus called the cochlear nucleus. Okay, and that's, that's in your palms. That's the first stop. Second neurons travel short, short ways, and then they stop in area called your superior olivary nucleus, also in the pons. Then, then your third order neurons travel a little bit further and stop in your inferior colliculus of the midbrain. And stop, that's a third order neuron. Then a fourth neuron shoves from there up to your medial geniculate of the thalamus. And stop. And then finally, a fourth neuron travels up to your primary auditory cortex, which is in your temporal lobe. And then you can perceive the sound. So this is the five neuron pathway for getting sound from the cochlea all the way up to your primary auditory cortex. So sometimes things go wrong here. So we have the types of, of hearing loss. So hearing loss happens when so, so you have a hearing loss called your conduction loss. This is when something goes wrong in the external ear all the way into the middle ear. So things, for example, you may have wax in the ear, in the external ear. Maybe your ossicles are froze or are fused together so the bones won't vibrate freely. So here, that means the sound cannot conduct into the inner ear. All right? So this usually this one is addressed by giving you hearing aids. Hearing aids that can turn up the volume, so to speak, and really blow the sound down into the, the pathway. Another form of hearing loss is called your sensory neural loss. Here, your inner hair cells die or just don't work. And therefore, when these cells don't work, when these inner hair cells you know, stop working, 
then there's no act activity in the neuron. And so you can hear. So one way to address the sensory neural loss is by the use of what's called cochlear implants, where doctors will put electrodes directly into the cochlea to deliver pulses to the inner hair cells or, or actually to your, or to, to, your, to your cranial nerve number eight on its way out to create sounds for you. Okay, that's it for here.